Thank you, Freak. And you're very right about the fact that that was pretty much the Kerp show. Actually, in Champions Like we were talking about how we absolutely loved Unicorn of Lo Unicorns of Love's team composition. That we felt like in Champions Like they had come out with a more decisive composition. They knew what they wanted to do. But then as soon as we got into those level ones, there were some early misplays that made it very hard for them to execute on what they wanted to do. Yeah, going into the game, we saw that uh, Unicorns of Love actually had the better team comp because Millennium's team comp was all on whether Kerp got rolling on Fizz or not. And level one, um, you saw that they Lee Sin queued in, got trunk to like 20%, and then they saw that the Lucian Nami was going top. And Lucian Nami typically is, has a pretty good 2v2. Nami's basically makes any lane good, and Lucian's naturally a lane bully. So I was surprised that Unicorns of Love decided to send their two top when they could have just sent their two bottom. And having control of bottom side allows you to control that dragon and control the early game more. And even though it's in an Irelia and a Mundo, you saw that he didn't really get that far ahead early. So even though uh, uh, Lee Sin was going bottom, trying to like get him ahead, it didn't really matter. And I don't really think Unicorns of Love had that good of an early game plan. They should have realized mid lane is what, what matters. Fizz versus Ari. Whoever gets ahead, it's an assassin versus assassin back to season three. Like Whoever gets ahead in that lane is going to snowball the game, one shot the supports, one shot everyone. And you saw Curb doing that. He was going off after he got that. They got the two kills mid, and he just kept rolling further and further ahead. Absolutely. We saw, as you said, Lee Sin go bottom after taking Millennium's red buff in an attempt to get his Aurelius you know, rolling in that 1v1. But but Kha'Zix decided to counter that by going mid, getting that early first blood. At three minutes and 30 seconds into the game, you get a first blood onto your Fizz on top of blowing uh, Ari's flash. I mean, that was a huge play in terms of allowing for uh, consecutive ganks afterwards. Yeah, as soon as they got that flash and the kill, as they Fizz hit six before Ari, Ultsum, another kill, double kill. We actually have that replay. We're going to pull that up. It's about 6.40 into the game. It's, it's perfectly timed because by securing that first blood, essentially you're giving Kerp not only more gold, you're giving him that experience advantage, knowing that he's going to hit six first. Kha'Zix timed it perfectly, comes back to the lane. We're going to roll the clip out now, Zion, if you could walk us through it. Yeah, so knowing Ari's flash is already down, Fizz hit six first, easy fish setup. Kha'Zix flashes to secure, uh, to make sure the E lands, and then Ari instantly just blows up, and then they clean up Lee Sin as well. And there's the even, kill. you know, the attempted counter gank. So, you know, you have to, like, Lee Sin has the right idea. He knows that that's coming, but it doesn't matter at that point because the level 6 to the level 5 Ari, you know, it's just like you're not going to come back in that 2v2. And so, given that, now you have a Fizz, 3-0. That gives you so much map control, especially on the bottom side, because your, your bot lanes have been sitting up top just farming away that whole time. Yeah, you saw as soon as they got the advantage, immediately after that double kill, they go secure the red buff. They have complete control of the map. It's, you, when you have an assassin that far ahead and you have uh, that roaming Kha'Zix jungle, like, you, you can just group up together and control the rest of the map. And Millennium kind of had that early game plan. They knew what they wanted to do, get the fizz rolling. Unicorns of love. Let's gank a Mundo, and that really didn't turn out that well. And I think Unicorns of Love just need to realize, okay, we had the better comp. Let's see what we can do early game to have a good plan going in with our comp so we can transition well, because I think they had the much better comp than Millennium. Millennium's like, Kerp, please get ahead on Fizz <laughs> and get really fed. And you saw that. He got so fed, and he was just able to just take control of the game. And if Unicorns of Love can pick a decent comp again and then have a good early game plan, I think they can actually do pretty well. But they were also giving up a lot of Dragons mid-game, but I think if they have a better advantage, they might be able to transition a lot better than they did this first game. Yeah, I like the idea that they should have opted into this, the standard map, or into the, uh, the 2v1s, saying that, hey, we have a hyper carry Tristana. Let's not let her get bullied around by Lucian, Nami. And Aurelia, she's going to be fine. Like, she can, she'll be able to 2v1, all right, Mundo, whatever. He's going to scale, but Tristana will scale right alongside that. And then let's put our jungler focus mid lane. If they had done that, not only would they have perhaps kept the Fizz down a bit more, they also would have had Dragon Control because their, two, their bot lane would have been on the bot side of the map. Yeah, it seems like they didn't really react that well. They're like, oh, it's uh, Lucian Nami going top. Let's send our two tops so Irelia gets the 1v1 against Mundo. And instead, they could have been like, hey, let's look at this from an objective standpoint. And if they send their two top, we send our two bottom. Our hyper carry, not only does our hyper carry get farmed, we can also secure the dragon and put more pressure mid with having our support roam mid as well. And they kind of just decided to match the lanes into what looked like was the worst lane for them. One other quick thing that I want to touch on before we, we move into our next replay is the build coming out of Kerp. Because it is, it's interesting because it's very safe. 
And given the fact that he came out with so many kills early in the game, a lot of people are like, build damage, build damage, build damage. He built uh, Sork Shoes Sheen, and then after Sheen, he went straight into an Hourglass before going into a Lich Bane. So he chose to go for less damage, more security, almost in an attempt not to throw. Yeah, exactly. Usually, uh, typically on Assassin, you don't want to go a defensive item second. Uh, you usually want to go for, like, Rabadons or uh, even DFG, uh, DFG yeah. And uh, he went in Hourglass because he was so fed that he could build a defensive item and still scale well and do a lot of damage. And that was kind of the anti-throw build there. And Kerp just was strong enough to do it. And it made it really hard for him to like, mess up in a team fight. I do want to hop into our second replay, which is the point at which Millennium kind of secured their lead. It's uh, in the bottom lane about 42 minutes into the game. Uh, if you can just walk us through this one, it's fairly straightforward, but just uh, the play-by-play, -play, if you will. Yeah, so Unicorns of Love was just giving up a lot of objectives, and they finally decide to go for a push bottom, and then Mundo kind of just walks up, and at this point, he's just like an unkillable tank. They land the tidal wave, and basically Fizz just instantly pops Thresh. Now it's 5v4 already. Mundo's still like half health, and he's chugging along, so he can just step up. He gets actually really low. Lee Sin gets bait. Oh, Lee Sin trades his life for Mundo, but... At the end, it doesn't really matter because Kerp just blows Tristana up immediately. This also shows the ability of Millennium to chase. You know, you have the move speed buffs from Nami there. So when they did finally get that fight where they got the first kill pretty cleanly, uh, Unicorns of Love just ended. They were on the run at this point. You've got Kha'Zix resets plus his W. Like, he evolved. He finally evolved the W because he, he actually evolved wings first. But he evolves that W. He gets the chase potential, and they just kind of run him down. They ended up securing Baron off that. And then pretty much, you know, as, as we were actually commenting, they didn't have much of a siege comp, but with that lead, they were able to effectively siege having the Baron buff. Yeah. I do want to jump into next game, though, because we only have a little bit more time. So I want to talk about what needs to be done in order to pull out a win here for Unicorns of Love, tie this series up. We've already touched a little bit, like, coming in with a bit more of a game plan. Do you think it is, again, just, like, don't put too much stock into the fact that you lost this game. Let's pick another solid composition like we already did. Let's have confidence in our picks and bans, but then let's play out the early game smarter. I typically think the second game in a best of five is the most important because uh, the higher seed gets the blue side first game, and I kind of feel like blue side gives that slight advantage. And the second game is really where they could turn it around and bring the heat back on. And what Unicorns of Love had, they had the better draft phase, and I think they can get that again on blue side. And Millennium really likes to have those assassins mid, and they don't really have a lot of wave clear when they pick these assassins. So if Unicorns of Love can get a decent siege comp going, and they can have like a decent like idea of what they want to do going into the early game and where they want their jungler to be, um, I think they can transition well into like a mid game where they just siege down turrets. And Millennium has, if they have decent uh, disengage, when Millennium engages on them with an assassin, then they can just constantly siege and constantly pick them apart and. I think a Siege Comp would work really well for Unicorns of Love right here. All right, well, Millennium looked determined to stay in the LCS in Game 1, but Unicorns of Love may have something to say about that. It's Game 2, shortly after the break. Stay with us. Oh. The Shark hits, Power of Evil, Gilles half mouth of Gilius. They didn't want to do that one. He's got a flash away, and Kerf gets the double kill. Can we finish it? Can I, I finish guess, it? I can stun. I can stun. Go. Yeah, nice. 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 Oh, oh my god, Kerb goes in for the charge. It goes down to Crete and the chase is on. Gilius bubbled beautifully. Respawn in him hook. Oh, double the bubble. Fail. Double bubble gonna knock down Hillisong pretty quick. In goes Kerb for power of evil. Shark gets Vizichachi, and there's two kills already picked up. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Finish this game. Finish. Come in, come in. Finish. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, just close him. Very nice. Beautiful game. And that's our first game. Would you believe it?